Hey, what it do, man? It's Hood Scout back for another Hood Scout High School football show, man. It's like my second or third episode. Uh, today, man, I got a special guest. I got, I got, a, I got a coach of a big time program, or he gonna take it to big time heights. Um, you know, a guy that I'm gonna really let him introduce himself. Um, but you know, we I thank him for his patience because we've been out here about 30 minutes trying to get out these kinks of, of this technology stuff, but we good. And uh, I got Coach Demarcus Harris with me, Coach. Introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are. Man, Demarcus Harris, head football coach, athletic coordinator for at, at Mesquite High. Man, I'm happy to be here. Hood Scout does a lot of good things, a lot of exposure for our kids. So when he, whenever he asks me to do something, I'm, it's a good chance I'm gonna get it done. Okay, let's let let's go from the beginning. Um, you know, if people don't know your story was on uh, CBS. Uh, I think uh, I want to say Keith Russell did that story. Mm -hmm. Hope I didn't butcher his name, but he did that story and just talked about some of those hardships you had to overcome. When, at what age or what period of time did you know you wanted to go into coaching? Well, man, uh, I've kind of been a coach my whole life. Uh, I was kind of the guy that, you know, what what little bit of rough life that we had, I was the guy that kind of held it all together and took care of everybody. I was usually the, the level-headed one. Um, so I just knew, man, through through this game and – and being a part of a team and being a part of that family uh, saved my life. So I'm just trying to give back to uh, everybody else. So um, you want me to talk about my life? Or, or yeah, just, just, just. I want you to, I want you to talk about. Um, so you play high school ball. Was that in Pittsburgh, Texas? It was, man. It was. Okay, so, now talk about that, and then kind of we can go from there. Okay. Well, yeah, I played at uh, at Pittsburgh, man. You know, I, we, we started struggling about middle school. Uh, drug e epidemic hit hit the town, hit my family hard. Um, my mom, my stepdad, my dad was incarcerated. I, I think he got locked up when I was nine years old. Um, he was actually at the fir it's first time ever seeing me do anything was uh, two weeks ago versus Heath. So it was, oh, wow. it was, that was exciting for me, man. It was a big time. You know, you're talking 30 years later, here's my dad, you know, shows up at the wow. game. I got a great relationship with those, with my, my mom and dad, but um, rough, man. I kind I was homeless. Um, I lived from house to house. Um, I lived with friends all throughout high school, man. I got kicked off of every team I ever played on except my senior year. Um, oh, wow. Man, just cause I had a problem with authority. Here's a kid, you know, I'm seventh and eighth grade, you know, raising myself, you know, I'm out. I don't have a curfew. I'm out seven, eight, you know, I'm, I'm out really two or three o'clock in the morning, don't really have anywhere to go. And then my friends around town started, you know, hey, man, you can stay at my house and you can stay at my house and you can stay at my house. And um, ended up being a, a just a good deal for me because, you know, I ended up being like like my brothers and like my family. Uh, but, man, you know, the first time I had my own bed, I was a uh, freshman in college. Man, the first time mm -hmm. I was sleeping in a bed, I was on people's floors and couches and and all those things. But man, I always I always had a good spirit. I always had that fighting spirit too that it was gonna get better. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean? let me just keep going, it's gonna get better. I made good grades in high school, uh, just because I was super competitive. I uh, you know, I had one of the highest scores on the SAT. I, I ended up getting an academic scholarship to one of the best schools in the country, Austin College, which is like Harvard, Princeton, yeah. Oh, you cut out, coach. Yeah. Um, OK, got gotcha. you. You, you got me. You know, people are here to help me. You know, they're not trying to they're not out to get me, you know, and then the blinders kind of came off when I went to Austin colleges that these kids were the same age and they've had some different experiences. Um, but but there's a different different way of life. Man, I, all I knew was the hood. I knew about <laughs> hustling. I knew about, you know, the cars, the, the, the flash. You know, I, I knew about that. I didn't even think about going to college. I knew I was going to go pro in the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, um, everybody it, it, knew me. Go it, ahead. It, let, let, let me stop you real quick, Coach. So because we, you know, who knows, this might be a listener that listens to this from out of town. When they hear Pittsburgh, Texas, where is that? Uh, is that like a smaller town? Kind of, kind of, you know what I'm saying? Because they might not have ever heard of, they've heard of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They might not yeah. have heard of Pittsburgh, Texas. Yeah, that's right. I don't even I don't even know what Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is. About. <laughs> I know where Pittsburgh, Texas. You know, we call it Pittsburgh, America, man. Uh, okay. Uh, no H. 
You know, it's P-I-T-T-S-B-U-R-G, no H. Small town, 4,072 people. Um, and you would think it was a small, small country town, but it's it's a lot going on in that town, man. You can get yourself in trouble like you're in in, in uh, Compton. You know what I mean? Okay, it, yeah. There's some booze out there like that. And um, it's one of those towns that uh, if you're not careful, you'll get stuck and you'll be okay. getting caught and you'll be you'll be fighting charges and you won't be able to get out and you're yet that cycle kind of just continues um uh with your family and you're not gonna get get out of that place man but if you can get out and we've got a lot of guys that got out we got a lot of head coaches man at one time per square area camp county pittsburgh texas was the richest county in the world wow um, we got like NFL guys, Bo Pilgrim's there. He was a billionaire at one point. Um, Pilgrim Pride. Pilgrim Pride, man. It's, it's, he's got a mansion in Pittsburgh, Texas, man. Carol wow. Shelby, Shelby Mustang, Pittsburgh, Texas. Okay. The Ezekiel Airship, the first airplane. They don't get credit for it. The Wright brothers get credit for it, but Pittsburgh, Texas. Cavendish Boots, Pittsburgh, Texas. Oh, wow. The first guy to ever spike a football, Pittsburgh, Texas. Homer Jones. He lives right down the street from my mother in law. And so, it was one of those towns, man. It, it just kind of had that, that just a little bit of everything. You could get country, you could get hood, you can get good, you could get bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just, you know, I was, I was fortunate enough. You know, everybody was like, "Man, that's that little smart dude, man." Y'all don't. You know, they, <laughs> you know, they never gave me, you know, never forced me to or, or try to hand, tell me to sell drugs or any of that. You know, they helped me out and kind of kept my the older guys kind of kept my nose clean and kept my hands clean and. Um, and you know, that, that kept me, you know, pushing through, pushing through the times, the hard times. I mean, I like my city, man, I, my city loves me and I love my city, man. I love Pittsburgh, Texas. So, yeah. Um, and I, you know, I think like, like people, like you just talked about them people, they're going to talk about you like that coach. When you win your state championship, you, they, they're going to say, you know, the market coach, the Marcus Harris, he's from this town. They're going to speak yeah, of you. Yeah. I believe that. So, so you, so, so. Coming from a rough area, and I'm sure many of our students, our athletes know what that's like, whether you be, I don't care if you're from South Dallas to Compton to wherever, you had to overcome some challenges like a lot of our youth have to do. So that leads up to, like, say, high school. You got an academic scholarship to Austin College. So from that period, kind of take us from that, that, that Austin College. You come from the struggle. You know, the OGs looked out for you. When you kind of got to Austin College, what was your mindset and what was your trajectory from there? Man, you wouldn't believe this. I've been around hustling, guns, gangs, thugging. Man, the most afraid I ever <laughs> been in my life is when I went to Austin College because everybody was so different. Okay. Nobody was like me. And, and, you know, it's easy when everybody you, you're around or like you. But what about when these dudes are just different and they're looking at life different? So that was that was different, different for me, man. But. I knew if I, you know, of course I played football there too, man. I was first team all conference, 33rd in the nation in tackles. Um, okay. I mean, dominating the game. What uh, position? I played Mike Linebacker, man. Okay, so, Mike Linebacker. Yeah. So I, man, I just balled out and was around some good coaches, around some good men. Uh, my room, my roommate, man, was a, a preacher. Man, he wore a suit and tie to school. Every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I got to see, I got to see how he man, ironing his shirt, slacks on, man, nice shoes every day. <laughs> you know so, uh, Chris Moore and I still talk to him today, man. He's a he's a preacher down in Houston at, at one of those mega churches. You know, I had David Aaron, who's a, a business major that that uh, you know also speaks two or three different languages, you know, those guys, we were, we were brothers too, you know, mm-hmm. uh, African-American kids and those, just seeing those guys. And we had a, a kid from, from uh, Africa, man. We kind of, uh, Mustafa, uh, Jean, and then we had Adi Roof, Adi Mani, who was from, from India, but just being around those guys, same age, you know, we're all different, but man, we all was just trying to get out and, and, and better, better our lives and better our, our families, man. So, um, you know, college was rough. You talking about me? I put myself through college. Nobody sent me. Okay. Money. Okay. Nobody bought me books. Nobody paid my tuition. Nobody, nobody helped me with my apartment. Nobody, you know, I I, I did it on my own, man. I figured out ways to, you know, I I'd go back home and 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 work and and all those things. So, just figured out a way to to get through. And did it get tough? Yeah, man. But 
you know, I, I like tough. And when it, yeah. you know, hard, I, I'm 100% okay. With it. <laughs> uncomfortable yeah cool with that like if I, if it's too easy for me i think oh man something's about to go on so yeah um but just grinding grinding through that man i i, I graduated from austin college man my first job was at DeSoto east middle school uh-oh now what now what what look, two things coach even going back to high school a little bit you didn't have a coach or anybody that was that was willing to help you number one and then number two at what age did, did that first that first small break come throughout the college my, when you went to Minnesota? My, my senior year, I did, man. My the head coach Gary Luttrell, uh, he gave me another chance, let me on the team. He told me I had to work, so I had to work okay. for this guy that becomes my mentor, who was a millionaire down in, down in East Texas. He becomes my me, uh, uh, mentor. Uh, he was a professor at the college, you know, and he would just pour into me, not, and and it worked the heck out of me too. Okay. <laughs> He had a farm with you know four or five hundred acres and cows and all that. Man, I wasn't into that. You know, I'm from <laughs> country, I, I really wasn't, wasn't into that. But <sighs> being around, being around him, just seeing him, and he gave me a check every day. He bought me oh, lunch. Wow. He bought me lunch, and then I worked for him on Saturday. So he'd buy me lunch. He paid me ten dollars an hour. Okay. And I'd get done with football, you know, uh, watching film, and I was straight out to his spot. My head coach would drop me off at his spot. Okay. And I will work, man. I get there and he's an older guy, man, probably 60, 70 years old. He working hard. So I'm like, man, I can't let this, this man outwork me. Mm -hmm. you know, he was teaching me those life lessons too. Teach me like, man, I'm going to be here for you, man. You can do this. You can change your family's life. Uh, Jim Archer, man, I still, I call him and his wife is awesome, man. They, they're good people. And they, they did, they sent me money through college more than, than, than my people did, man. Okay. So, um, you know, and then uh, Tim Ender, man, he's he's down, and I think Coach Ender's down in East Texas somewhere. I can't think of the. He's at a little small town. Mm -hmm. he, was a, he was a basketball coach at Pittsburgh. Him and his wife, art teacher Karen Ender, man, just you can do it, man. He was the guy that took me into the bank and was like introduced me to uh, some loan offices. And like, man, I didn't have a car, so I had some money. He was like, man, go up there, tell them uh, I sent you, you know, and I still deal with with that bank today because of, because of him. And I still talk to him. I go to his house when I go to East Texas. Oh, wow. But it was me starting to realize like they, they're here to help me. They're not mm -hmm. to get me, you know, and it was a lot of it was me just relating to authority. I struggled with that. Here I am. Yeah. You know, you're talking about considering myself grown for since six, seven grade, you know? So uh, that, that was rough on me, but then, you know, getting through and, and people believing in you pushing through and, and then I go to, I actually, my first interview ever was at a middle school's crown over uh, that fed in the Den Geyer. So I had the choice between Den Geyer feeder and DeSoto High's feeder, right? Okay. Den Geyer had just opened, right? Uh -huh. So who do you think I chose? DeSoto. I, the coach, right? <laughs> yeah. get, I think Geyer gets what, like, now what, what age was your coach at the time? What age was you? Man, How old I was you? 23. Okay, 23. So this is for y'all young coaches. Listen yeah. up. So you were 23. Man, I'm working. I, I, at middle school, you just got to get my feet wet. Uh, learned a lot. Um, you know, I got to see Von Miller and Cyrus Gray and Tony Gerard Eddie. All those guys were NFL guys that were on the on the varsity team at DeSoto. So, you know, got to be around that. Um, but I also felt like uh, I was uh, – I could coach on a, on a high school level. I, I wanted to coach on a high school level. I've always been a student of the game, loved the game, understood stuff, you know, and then um, that's how I play. That's, that's what made me uh, so successful because I studied the game so much. And so, man, after that year, I go to Dallas Hillcrest. All right. I do. Okay. I spend like three or four years at, at Hillcrest. You're talking about picking kids up, cooking, getting the kids haircuts, Mm -hmm. feeding kids, you know, but just, I mean, I just remember making runs to the bus station to go get kids and, and get them to practice, man, left there and went to Little M, become the defensive coordinator at Little M with, with uh, Donald Stowers. His son is Eli Stowers, the quarterback that was at Guy. Oh, yeah, at Guy, at and m now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, exactly. And then the running back was, uh, I show my, he was Cobb. He was the running back at Guy. His daddy was the O.C., Mm -hmm. So I was at Little M. I stayed in Little M. I was driving from Mansfield to Little M. You talking? Ooh, what was that like a forty? That was two, that's a drive. 
two hours there, two nice. hours back. You okay. know? What and then doing it during this time period, you're young, you're still in the mid twenties, coach. What is your thinking as a coach? How do you feel? Do you feel like, man, I'm gonna move up these ranks? Do you feel like, oh man, I, I need to catch a break? Like, what's the mindset of you in your twenties? I think that's your was that your second, second, third, third job, right? Third job, but I'm. I was like, what, what's, you what's your about me? I'm still, like, I'm still thinking, like, I'm a street dude. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know, okay, yeah, I'm just doing this, but I'm a street dude. You know. What <laughs> I mean? like, so I leave Little Am, and this is really what changed my way of looking at, at athletics and, and coaching. Man, I got with Carlos Lynn. Okay. Stephen Halford. You know, and Vincent Green. I got with those guys at at Seguin, Arlington Seguin. Now, say say say, I, say those names again, Coach, because they whoever the, the, those men deserve the credit. Say their name one more time. Carlos Lynn is a head football coach at Cedar Hill High School. Stephen Halford was his OC. He passed away a couple of years ago. And Vincent Green, who's my assistant head coach now, were at Seguin. So these were African American men that was that, that they were doing it the right way. When I got with those guys. I was like, man, they're passionate about helping kids, you know, and that's what I've always wanted to do too. But they were passionate about helping kids, and and they went the extra mile, and we picked kids up, and we we just wanted to make sure kids were were doing stuff right, man. And so mm-hmm. I'm with them for four years, and I get to watch Carlos Lynn work, man. You talking about just just gonna do stuff right? Yeah, you know, everything, you know, and. You know, Coach Harris, it ain't got to be like this. You know, you can – It's it, you're a great coach. You got a great mind. You're a grind. I was a grinder, bro. I got, yeah. I knew, like, I, I'm going to outwork everybody. Give me a job. <laughs> it's done. Yeah. I got a big film down. If you need the film broke down, I got your film broke down. Like, I was a uh, uh, linebacker's coach. I had the film broke down on Tuesday every game. You know, yeah. by formation, by by personnel, by everything, and I'm handing it to the defensive coordinator. It's on his desk. It's done. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you hold need hold on, bro. You you just dropped the you just dropped the nugget, man. You, and we got we got brother Ben. I see you tuning in, man. Yeah, this coach Demarcus Harris. So thank you for your comment. Uh, so you're what, what age are you? Were you breaking this film down? You're still a young assistant. You're a linebacker coach. Yeah. I mean, that that's a lesson to these young coaches who probably think they're doing a lot, coach. I've always like that, that. Nobody, people don't really understand a lot. Like, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, let me go back to Hillcrest, right? Do a Hillcrest, you were taping ankles, you were setting up the field, you were the guy making the ice, you were the guy doing the water bottles, you were the guy taking the kids home. You did everything. Like, so you learned how to work. That's why I respect DISD so much because I learned how to work. Okay. Like it was a straight eight. It wasn't no breaks. Like you are, are you looking around? No, nah, no, nah, it's you. You're the trainer. You're the water guy. You're the guy that's going to help cut the grass. You're the guy that's going to be teaching. Class. You, so, um, you know, learning how to work. And then the, I always felt like, well, I don't just want to be a rah rah guy. I don't want to just be the hype man. I want to be this X's and O guy too. So okay, Ooh. you know, I, I'm talking about man. I drew formations. I would fold up sheets of paper, man, and drew every our defense versus every formation in the world. Wow. I'd make those formations, and I, how would I play this? How would I play that? And you know, and then so it started, you know, just ringing in my head at times, man. And I, it's still, I wake up at four o'clock in the morning, like <laughs> hey, we, need, we need to do this, but yeah, and then so. When I went to Little Am and I was I begin I, I got a chance to be a defensive coordinator, and then I go to uh, Seguin. I'm kind of cold, but man, everything that needs to be done is done. You ain't gonna have to worry about my group. My group gonna be on point. Just give me the guys, and let me go to work. Um, and so and that that kind of carried on. And I go to so I leave Seguin. One of my college uh, football buddies get a job. He gets the Richardson High job. Okay. I want you to come. And we have been talking about this for, you know, two, three years and when we were in college, like, and then up until my career. So we've been talking about it for eight, nine years. I mean, I'm going to get that, be a head coach. I want you to help me start my program. So okay. I go, I go to Richardson. Okay. I go to Richardson for literally summer and football season. Right. We go from last place in defense to first place in defense. Okay. With not a whole lot of talent, but yeah, last place we didn't win any games. 
right? Don't win any games. But I learned so much that year under him because he was super organized. He had a way mm. of doing You know, uh, why we practice this? Why? And he, he kind of, Greg Pels kind of taught me the why behind everything. Why are you doing it? Are you just throwing it out there? No, no. Why? He would ask me, mm-hmm. why is that play number one, Coach Harris? Why is that play number two? Why is this play over here? Why is it – where are you setting your drills up at? That changed my thing. That changed my mindset. Like, man, how you do anything is how you do everything. Like, Yeah, and that's one of your sayings. Like, it, it, everything matters. Like, how you break it out. You know, which hand are you breaking it out with, right? Mm-hmm. I break it out with left hand, so your heart's in it. You know, okay. just, just you're talking about going back to the minute things, right? So in January, Joey McGuire gets the Baylor job. He goes to Baylor as a as an assistant, right? Mm-hmm. Coach Lynn interviews for the City Hill job. Coach Lynn calls me. Now, mind you, I just left Seguin. I've been gone essentially five or six months. Okay. Okay. He calls me. Hey man, I want you to be the defensive coordinator at Cedar Hill. I'm on the way. <laughs> right? Okay, and so, and so and, and, and again, you was the assistant, the yeah. assistant coordinator, and uh-huh. then at at the uh, yeah. at the other school, you was the defensive coordinator, and then you yeah. got the call from Coach Lynn. Uh huh. So okay, I go, I go I go to Cedar Hill, man. Following a legend, you know, yeah. how hard, that was hard, man. Following Joey McGuire. Uh, you talking about a great, just a wizard, great. He was just great for kids. He was great for African American kids. He did a good job. Yeah. Did a yeah. great job, great job with those kids. And uh, man, here I am walking into where the show ESPN's there for a week. Uh, you know, Harvard's <laughs> there for a week. You got cameras every every day. You got a hundred people watching practice. You know, it was it was crazy. But I had been, all those experiences that got me ready for the CD Hill defensive coordinator job. I, I had a why, I had a reason, I had a way we broke it out. I had all that, I had juice, I had energy, I had been to it. So I understood like the work part of it. And so, man, you go, we go over there for, you know, five years, we're top five in the state in defense. Okay. You know, I, I, and the biggest accomplishment of all was every kid on defense, starter and backup went to school. Oh, wow. You know, you're talking oh, wow. just on defense in five years, six years, probably 70 or 80 kids that went to school just on defense. But that's yeah. because we check grades. That's because, you know, I understood like everything, the vital things like let me let me make sure these kids are getting everything they need. And we're going to go the extra mile and we're going to stay on top of their grades. And, and we, we already knew the colleges were coming. Let's get our kids ready. So we found places. For our kids to to uh, play, you got to think on that staff, man. We had DJ Man, head coach at Lubbock Coronado, mm-hmm, Lance, yep. head coach of Molina, um, and for a while we had uh, man the head coach at WT White was there for for a little bit, um, and uh, the head coach that's at West Mesquite. Was there when we came in? He was he was the the DN's coach. Uh, Man, so is there are, are these all on the coach Lynn coaching tree? Nah, uh, like the dude from um that was at that's at West Mesquite that went to Mahia. He was with Joey. We were only together okay. for about a couple of months. You know, but spring ball he got a head job, and so we were together for a little bit. You know what I mean? But those guys all knew Coach Lynn. You know, Coach Lynn was a CD guy. So. um Man, our uh, a guy that was my safeties coach is the defensive coordinator at at uh, ETBU. You know, okay, one is coach that's a defensive coordinator in uh, Florida. I got a, another corners coach who's a principal. You know, so you're talking about a lot of great minds, great men um, that I was around, are able to help me. You know, get to where I I need need to get to. So uh, now, just, now, just now when you now, when you got to Cedar Hill, Coach, you had your experience at, at those other stops. What was, what was a, what was something different there? Was it maybe the talent, maybe the players, or was it just pretty much similar to most of the other stops? No, man, it was completely different. It was the culture, man. Like it okay. was a winning culture. Like the kids understood it, the community understood it. Like they don't have football banquets at Cedar Hill, man. They have ring ceremonies. They don't have okay. banquets. So. You're talking about like when you walk into 
the City Hill Fieldhouse, the just the, the pictures on the wall and the kids have been to college and NFL and the gold balls and the state championships and uh, the weight room and just all all the powerlifting championships and just you oh, wow. feel it. The tile is a different color. You can feel it when you walk into that place. <laughs> and so I'm I'm gonna do everything in my power to get this place just like that. Yeah. Everything yeah. I will give out before I give up. I'll yeah. fall dead before I give up. I'm a, we're gonna get our kids to the next level. We're gonna get our community to the next level, and we're gonna get kids to college, man. We're gonna we're gonna help them change change some lives. So, um, I am able to hire. You know, I hired two guys that I, I coached at Seguin. You know what I mean? So you're talking about just a, a blessing. I got to hire Vincent Green, our coach, with at Seguin. Yeah, and I want to, I want, I want to get, I want to, I want you to really talk about your coach staff in just a second. But I want to, I want to go back to that Cedar Hill thing. Everybody should know Joey McGuire. He won state championships at Cedar Hill. It's right on the stadium. If you pass by on 67, big and bright for you to see it. State champions when they won. What was he's at Baylor now, and uh, you know he may even get a head coaching job at the next level. What was like a little nugget, or what was something you learned about him during that process? Well, you know Joey, man. He like last year on the state run, and he texts me every game. Okay, he had some good stuff, man. But he was just like, he just you know, Joey's biggest deal is love the kids and they'll play for you. Okay, you know, care about the kids and they'll play for you. And so, you know, that was right on time for me. I, I love, I love the kids. I fight for them. I grind for them. I go grind for the kids. So, I, I try to get them everything they need, everything they 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 need to be successful. And then we hold them accountable, man. We we stay at them and stay on them about grades and behavior and all that stuff. So um, that's just that's what the what, what he that was kind of the biggest nugget, man. Is Joey worked out of out of love, like love for those kids. So okay, they played hard for them. They played hard for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we should have. And I and a lot of people don't know this, but I followed Cedar Hill really close last year, and I wasn't really close to that program. Is as I got back into high school football. It's just the way fate have it, you know. I was, I really, I think I got really invested with them. They had a big win over Alito last year. I think that was one of the first games. Yeah. And then um, about we November, to, man, we, we held them to their lowest uh, point yeah. total in the last yeah. two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a big win, man, because yeah. that was a big win if you follow Texas football. So I kind of, I really got close to you guys around that November time, right before the playoffs. You had Caden Salter who went on to to go to the next level. So that that y'all went to the state, y'all went to the state, and you was there for some years. Defensive coordinator, you know, you know linebackers. Take me well. First off, I'm sure that was a, a great feeling, but take me into that moment of okay, I'm ready to step in as a head coach. What was that like? I mean, you yeah, got I, I don't know how. What was that call? What was that? What was that process like? I, I always wanted to be a head coach. You know, after I you know got with Coach Lee and them at Seguin, I was like, man, I want to be a head coach. You know, seeing those guys work, the way they do things, and impacting the community and impacting kids. It's like, man, I I want to be a head coach. Man, I want to run. I want to run a program. I want to. I want to help everybody I can help and uh, and do it and do it my way. But I you know I've had interviews. Probably the last six or seven years for head coaching jobs, man. I never got any one of them. You is know, it is it okay to name a few of those schools on record, coach? No. Nah. Oh no, nah, if you don't want to, that's fine. No, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Hey, never wrong with that coach. No, no, you don't you don't want to you don't want to name you don't want to. Okay, name, okay, but, that'll work. So, um, but um, you know, I didn't didn't get any of those jobs, man. And, and head coaching, getting becoming a head coach is it's you can go in the interview and kill the interview, and that wow. don't mean that you're gonna be the guy. Wow. You know what I mean? It's just it's like that because you know it's just I mean I don't know it's just the way it is. So, mm-hmm. uh, but you know this year it was different. We made a run. Um, sometimes I was seeking jobs. This time they were seeking me. Okay. Um, and so building relations, I build relationships with everybody I come in contact with, and you know people were were putting my name out there, and this guy's ready, and this guy's ready, and he's ready to be a head coach. And man, that was kind of the first time. Like I knew I wanted to be a head coach, but I felt like, man, I'm ready. You know, okay. you know you've seen the last dragon, right? Mm-hmm. The glow. I felt like I had the glow at that time. You know, like okay. the last dragon. So, man, it just felt right. And uh, Mesquite, the people, you know, interviewing with them and, and talking to them, I was like, man, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to. You know, I raised my family here. And, um, 
they're going to help me. They want me to be successful and they love what I'm bringing to the table. And uh, there wasn't any question about that. And I'm a, I like working for people, not places. So, you know, Cody grows. I'm in. Let's go. Let's mm -hmm. go. Get it. So um, uh, great, great move, man. We got this program moving in the right direction. Um, you know, we got a chance to play for third place this week and then we're in the playoffs. So, you know, it's, we're moving in the right direction. We're just going to get better. Yeah. And for people that don't know, Mesquite, uh, you guys won, Mesquite won a championship. What would you say? Because that was 01, 2001? 2001. Yeah. So that was about, about 20. About, yeah. So that was about 20 years ago. So it, it, it's, it's to me, I, and I told coaches, I said, man, it's almost like a sleeping giant. You know what I'm saying? Because I think yeah. you can, I won't even say what I said in totality because it's going to come to fruition. But I just feel like you could build that program up to to become a winner. You know what I'm saying? And because you guys have talent, many people, you know, this Texas high school football landscape, and I'm just going to be honest, a lot of people, when the school is dormant, they go in and raid talent. But that's not that's not going to happen. Coach, coach, if you're a feeder system and your high school is mesquite, coach is going to get you right. So you, you took over the job, coach. Speak on speak on the support, speak on the coaching staff. What it what was you what was your goal of let me go hire this coach? What was you looking for? How did you begin to build your staff? Um, man, you know, just over the years, the relationships I built with people. Uh, but I want to make sure I got some coaches that uh were were about kids, not about okay. egos, not about themselves. Uh coaches that are here for kids that that understand grades, that understand behavior, that understands discipline. And um knowing that those things are, are going to help us win football games, man, we'll win football games because we're better people. And that's why we're winning. Our mm -hmm. kids just do better. We had a hundred percent passing uh, for varsity football. I mean, that, that hadn't happened anywhere I've ever been. That's huge. Uh, but, um, you know, going out and, you know, of course, Vincent Green was the first guy I hired as my assistant head coach. I had been with at Arlington Seguin. Um, and we had talked about this for, for years. I mean, I went and hired Eric Sean, who was my special teams coordinator, who was the AD of Joshua. So you're talking about him, him helping me. He's been an AD. That's my first job. Hey, coach, you need to do this. This needs to get done. This needs to get done. And so, you know, getting getting that stuff done. Then we got Yogi Gallegos, who had won a national championship at AM Commerce, who was at Commerce High School at the time. So we got him. We got Desmond Ferris, who was a great old line coach, played. You know, he was a, a college coach. Um, o line guy. Uh, we got Zach Collins, who's a uh, 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 he's also coaching the O line. A uh, young guy that that trains mm -hmm. trains O linemen. Um, got Quentin. Shout out to Zach. Yeah, Quentin. Yeah, Gale, I, uh, I coached up at at Seguin. You talking about a great coach, man? Corners coach. He's amazing. I got okay. Coach Roark, who was my safeties coach. At yeah, City shout Hill. out to Coach. Yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> he's my guy. That's that's the defensive coordinator now. Um, we got Danny Johnson, who I've been, you know, at DeSoto and Cedar mm -hmm. Hill, and North Crowley, who have been around these types of kids, and uh, just a great man and great for kids. Um, and then, you know, I got Tedrick Burns, who's from Pittsburgh, Texas, that that was a holdover from the last staff, so we kept him. Um, and then he, what, what position he coaching, coach? He's coaching the corners, and he's my okay. freshman defensive coordinator. Okay. Young young guy that's, that's that's getting it done, does a good job. Um uh, and uh let me see, I wanna make sure I don't leave anybody out. Oh man, Joseph Judy, D Tower. Okay. Coach. He's a lot a, of energy. Young guy was up and coming, man, does a good job, great technical guy. But look, me talking about Doug goes over and beyond for his group, man. He mm -hmm. uh, man, he pick him, he'll pick him up, he'll feed him, he does everything. So he does a good job. We got Jeremy Hernandez, who's a Mesquite High legend. We got Reggie Fish, who's a Mesquite High legend. You know, keeping those guys on, on staff was was a good move. They they're doing a great job. They're growing as coaching coaches mm -hmm. too. So, and that's what it's about. Everybody growing and getting better and uh, and getting after. And then we we hired uh, uh, Reese Sheldon was a was a holdover. He was a uh, freshman our freshman uh, head coach, and then Jordan Foster's our, our freshman. Great guy too, man. Football, baseball guy. So, um, got a great staff, and I didn't want to rush my staff. I wanted to make sure I got the right pieces, and that's the reason I'm. We're having the success. We're having part of it is because I got a great coaching staff. Um, yeah. Okay. And we and we're coming up on almost forty minutes, so I'm gonna get ready to let you coach. We've been rolling, talking for a yeah, long time. Yeah. 
let me let 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 let's let's end with this, Coach. Where do you want to take this program? Whether it be facilities, whether it be where do you want to take this program, and then offer some words of encouragement to a young guy getting into the profession. Okay, man. Uh, you know, I wake up every day, and I and my goal is to for this program to be, and it's all sports, but this Mesquite High's program and feeder programs to be the best program in the state of, in the country. Okay. So every day I'm at it like that. So, um, and that's that. That's just the standard that we've set. We're gonna have the one of the best programs. People are gonna come. You know, they're gonna see it this year. We're gonna have 15, 16, 17 guys go to school because we busted our butt for them and grades, and they they're doing their part. So, um, but for a young guy getting in, get past because it, it. You know, a lot of people uh, fizzle out at about five years. Okay, but you have to every day understand your why. Why are you coaching? Mm -hmm. Why are you coaching? You're coaching for kids. You're coaching to coach kids. Don't if your why is something else, get out. Okay, you're in, you're in the wrong. You in, in this business. You're in the wrong wrong business. This is a kid business. Get the kids right, mm -hmm. right. And if your your why is all about the kid, how can I grow kids? How can I help kids? How can I love kids? Then you'll be all right, man. You'll never burn out, and that's wow. that's what we got for the young people. Wow. Okay, guys, if you heard it from his mouth, man, a great, great man. Almost an hour interview with Coach uh, Coach Ash, the Mesquite Skeeters head coach. Um, this team is going to the playoffs, and if I'm not mistaken, last year they did not go to the playoffs. So you're seeing dividends right now. They got a bright future, and uh, be on the lookout for the Mesquite Skeeters coach. You know how I feel about you. I'm so grateful that you joined me, man. Uh, I feel like this won't be the last time. Even though we had some little issues to, as far as technical, I said, man, this is going to be epic. I just knew it. I said, this is going to be epic. I got a fighting claw to get Coach uh, Coach on here. And Coach, one of his sayings is how you do anything is how you do everything. So, Coach, thank you, man. You know I'm going to be at those playoff games. And much success, brother. All right, man. Appreciate you. Okay, take care. All right. Bye-bye.